Köszöntöm a nézőket! A mai műsorunkban a jazzről fogunk beszélgetni. A műsor vendége pedig Amina Claudine Myers, amerikai jazz zeneszerző, jazz nő, jazz zenész. Hello Amina, welcome to our show, welcome to Serbia. Thank you. You were born in Arkansas and as I heard your uncle teach you rhythms. Yes, he started me just marching around the room. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Is this when, when, when you fell in love with music? Well, you know, I was always, uh, I, I started classical music at six, and you know, we were taught to obey. I mean, the parents put me in that. My great uncle and uncle put uh, classical music, and I liked it, yes. I. I I just did it because I was supposed to go every Saturday and play, and I looked forward to it. studying classes, yes. But I started really professionally playing in the church, as I said, at 11, gospel music. And it was just natural for me to play by ear. And I didn't think I'd think of it, playing and singing since I was small. So. That was just what I was supposed to do. But other people seemed to enjoy me playing and singing. You were studying piano, yes. as I know. Tell me a bit more about that part of your life. I started playing in the church at 11 years old, playing and singing. And then I uh, moved to Dallas, Texas. And in the church, a group of women organized a singing group. I was one of the piano players. In fact, I was one that taught the songs to the other young ladies. There were other, about two other piano players. But I did most of the playing and teaching of the songs. Uh, at that time, I was still studying classical music. Then I moved back to Arkansas, and I uh, organized a group of four singers that sang gospel. This was during the 50s. We had the great classical gospel singers like the Davis Sisters, the Clara Ward singers. And we were the same four people. We were the Gospel Four, and we had another name, the Royal Hearts. So we Very just, interesting name. We decided if we were going to sing gospel music, we would not sing rhythm and blues, that it was wrong. That lasted one day. <laughs> I went to college and I wanted to be a school teacher. That was the thing you did in those days, you know. Um, and I thought I wanted to be a concert pianist. I didn't have the discipline or anything to be a concert pianist. So a young lady came up to me and told me she, got, she had a gig for me working in a nightclub. Is, the, is it the safari room? Yes. It is. Yes. I wanted to ask you, what is your first thing that you remember when I say the safari room? Probably autumn leaves. I had a very small repertoire. <laughs> and what it was nice, because the club owner was a jazz musician, and his brother had a rhythm and blues club. With the safari room, That got me started, playing jazz and singing. I was mostly singing and playing, because I couldn't play jazz. Uh, I tried to emulate uh, Alma Jamal's, the easier songs. But I was singing Nina Simone's, the easier Nina Simone songs, uh, Dakota, Dakota Staten, and standards at that time. Um, So that got me started in the fire room. I'll always be grateful. For And then the next year in college, the club owner gave, put a drummer with me and a bass player. I did that until I graduated. <coughs> then in the summertime, my mother was in Louisville, Kentucky. And the drummer was from Lexington, Kentucky. He called me and told me he had a gig for me one summer but it was playing the organ. I said, I can't play no organ. Because during the 60s, organs came into style. You know, Jimmy Smith, Jack McDuff, two of my favorites. So I didn't know but one song on the organ. It was called Money. And I learned three songs a night. 
And that's how I started playing the organ in the clubs. In the meantime, I was playing for the church on Sundays. So I was, you know, doing both. What do you first remember when I say Hungary, for example? I think about this song I used to love to play. It's Hungarian Rhapsody, I believe. I don't remember it now, but the melody, the, 
the uh, the rhythm that is very sensual, the Hungarian music, you know, and I love that sound, the rhythm, especially the rhythm. Uh, so when I, I when I went to Budapest, fortunately I had I was able to go, and I bought some Gypsy records because the music was so so interesting. It's very very beautiful. What do you listen when you're not listening to jazz? As you mentioned, now you liked the Hungarian gypsy music. What else do you like to listen? Well, I like to listen to classic music. Does it inspire you? Yes, yes, it's inspiring. I, I like to listen to piano and also, you know, string quartets sometimes. Uh, and some of the more modern, the modern, uh, Bella Bartok, you know. Uh, How do you see jazz today uh, when, when, when you remember like the 60s or the 70s or the 50s? Where did it evolve? Jazz today, during that time it was, uh, I was playing, you know, a lot of standards. And then, of course, uh, Charlie Parker, uh, Miles and, and, you know, Coltrane, uh, they were setting standards, Arnett Coleman. They started stretching the music, and so playing standards was the way to go. Playing standards, playing standards, and the blues. But then when I moved to Chicago and became a member of the AACM, Association for the Advancement of Creative Musicians, this was, this, this, uh, the AACM, I began to uh, create, realize that I could write music and that it did not have to follow, it could follow any form that I wanted. It didn't have to be a certain way. Because I was playing with uh, some of the traditional musicians, but I couldn't stretch out. You had to keep the music right in the chord structure, the form. But joining the AACM, I was able to stretch and do, let the music go anyway, anywhere, and it was accepted. And so this way, I realized I could grow, let the music grow by improvising. I know just what to do. I got on the phone and call home straight to you. I'll get on the phone. 
Is it easy to work with other people to collaborate? You've, you've worked with a lot of people like Archie Shep or David Murray and a lot of, lot of really a lot of people. Could you learn one from one each other? Oh yes. Archie, you know, Archie has gospel in him too. And Gene Ammons, he was so soulful programming the music. I learned about Sonny Stitt. Uh, you know, I learned from all of them. From Lester. And it's easy, it was easy. Never a problem playing with them. Can you tell me for the end what can we hear in Novis at the Novistar Jazz Festival from you? You want to hear my CDs, songs from my CDs, Samaru, which is Warloff for Songs for My Soul. They're spirituals. I wanted to honor my ancestors. And you're going to hear improvisational uh, spirituals with the improvisation. And then you're going to hear some blues and other compositions I've written. Amina, thank you very much for this conversation and have a great time here in Serbia. Thank you so much.